Hey, Alexander, how are you doing? Hey, hey, nice to see you again, Nick. Hello. So uh, we're here at ADC. This is a first for me. I mean, Audio Developer Conference. I mean, this is where the magic happens, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so you guys are one of the sponsors here, but also, yes. you know, as we've spoken to you in the past, you know, yes. things have been moving on a bit. Yeah. Your whole kind of premise is to offload audio processing to GPUs. Yes. How's that been going? Yeah, so first of all, we have first official partners, as you can see here, those that we already released with, uh, Vienna Symphonic Library, which we are very proud about, and Audio Modeling and Mantra, these are ongoing releases. We also support uh, more than just AMD and NVIDIA. Uh, Apple asked us to remove their logo for whatever sakes. Uh, we support today NVIDIA, AMD for Windows, Linux, uh, for uh, M Silicon for Apple as well, and soon we are gonna introduce a uh, few more platforms such as uh, uh, Qualcomm and Intel. And uh, there are more and more vendors that are coming, not just in the pro audio, but as well in game audio, in the other spaces, including automotive, consumer audio, and so on. We call all of it, what we do, accelerated audio computing. Right, okay. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, and now there, there's so many chips. Like, say, we've got the system on chips. The new Snapdragon X is probably exactly. quite a challenge as well. So, I mean, a lot of platforms to be managing. Oh, yeah. Um, so, you're able to offload, no matter what the chip, you can yes. still offload to the GPU, right? Exactly. And we provide the same unified C++ interface. That means that you code things once, and then you get it compiled and built for multiple platforms without actually understanding how it works underneath. And in fact, yesterday when I was given a workshop that was exactly dedicated to that very thing, you can wonder, you may wonder what is this about, but this is a neural amp modeler, very well known open source project. And this is running 13 instances, uh, local real time inference on my RTX 4090 GPU that is embedded in my Windows NVIDIA laptop. And I can show you it is running real time with the latency here in Reaper, 96 kilohertz, 64 samples. That means 0.66 millisecond, which is amazing, right? And we run 13 instances quite easily, and we can do like 100 more. So what I'm trying to say is that yesterday, uh, we were given a workshop dedicated how to port this open source project and make it uh, available to uh, locally run inference on the GPU and for us it took just three weeks and during the workshop I mentioned that uh, to make all of this happening for multiple platforms mentioned here and the ongoing platform support it is a Cartesian product of uh, target GPU platforms multiplies uh, operating system multiplies driver API different multiplies tool chain such as NVIDIA CUDA and so on and so forth yeah which results into more than 300 different configurations that you need to implement support for, right? So that means if your audio, whatever developer, pro audio plugin or consumer grade products, you definitely don't want to go to the- No, I mean, it's your, a huge, so, I mean, oh, essentially yeah. what you've done is you've figured out how to get external software to talk to yes. GPUs and leverage the power of it. Exactly. And that's what your, kind of product essentially is, right? Exactly, and we do this in the very consistent way, something that NVIDIA CUDA and the other frameworks cannot offer. In fact, this system that we call scheduler, it works uh, as uh, pulses every 0.2 millisecond from the host CPU side to the device side to treat with all of the data, audio data, parameters of the processors, graph meta information to update the device, to offload to the device, perform the stuff, and then return it back really quick. Something that you cannot do natively. And this is very interesting, because when we first spoke to you, there were plugins like this, there was a convolution reverb. Yes. I mean, now there are other uh, uh, items coming on board as well. So I, I imagine gaming and gaming authoring is probably, and, and surround mixing must be oh, yeah. kind of a big area exactly. thing, because that requires a lot of oh, yeah. grunt. Yeah, when it comes to use cases, there are so many of those, and we just, that's the reason why we created the platform. That's the reason why we don't want to be a, a final product company like in the normal way. We don't want to be a plugin maker because it creates, it takes to create another company. So we offer someone else, 
like game audio companies, we want to offer uh, dynamic uh, convolution reverbs. So you can do the ray tracing dynamically. You can work with destructible, uh, destructible objects. You can work with dynamically changing geometry for the very first time, tackling just a three to 5% of the GPU power and would be able to run your regular graphics works on the GPU the same time when you render this convolution-based reverberation dynamically. So imagine you play a shooter and before you cannot smash the wall and make a hole inside the wall to change the, how the sound propagates, right? right it's all okay. static. But if you do this dynamically, you can actually, by making a hole inside the wall, you can notice there is an enemy on the right side of this hole and you can uh, push uh, another rocket right just in the direction yeah, yeah, of yeah. the enemy. Understand. So this is not just about making the immersive sound, this is actually uh, about to make the sound utilitary in the games. Right, so it becomes a dynamic environment as well. Exactly. Interesting. Exactly. So, I mean, I guess, so I noticed you've got some interesting products here. Oh, yeah. what, what else are you showing? Yeah, so today we have another partner, which is a Mantra. Uh, this is the Canadian-based company. They are uh, famous for their collaboration uh, with uh, game developers. I think I spoke to them at NAMM, actually, yeah. last year yes. or the year before. Yeah, I yeah them. Brian De Levera, uh, this guy is... Uh, very well known for his project with Resident Evil. In fact, they create uh, some amazing instruments that make scary ambient sound whenever you need it exactly for Resident Evil and things like that. So what we have here today, this is alpha version of the product. In fact, this is a developer's demo that we showcase for the first time today. This is again a reverberation, a, re a reverb plugin, which is very heavy and it utilizes 64 channels as bosses, and you can have all of those combined together in space under fifth order ambisonics, and you can provide the Dolby Atmos output wow, up okay. to 22.2 channels. This is crazy. And before us, before our collaboration, uh, Brian reached, uh, reached out our team, and he said, I cannot make my plugin running uh, real time, and in fact, when he uploaded his CPU prototype, it cannot be just basically rendered inside the door. When you hit the play button, you hear nothing because it just cannot... Can't uh, cope with the amount of calculation. Exactly, right. exactly. And this thing is running in the Reaper and with a 3D Unity-based GUI, real-time with multiple instances. This is one way of thinking how our GPU audio platform enables something that was unprecedented. I mean, I know this, this conference is sort of general audio developer conference, so there's game sound and stuff. Yeah. I suppose what our audience might be interested to know is kind of, is there potential for real-time instruments as well as sort of convolution and that sort of things? Yes, so uh, there's another guy, and this conference is very different compared to the previous years because there are new people who come to the field of the GPU, they try themselves, to build uh, stuff with native frameworks such as NVIDIA CUDA, and they explore themselves what else can be built and what kind of uh, the GPU technology utilization could be. So there is another guy who, uh, who give talk uh, today, uh, and he speaks about neural, um, neural engine-based synthesizer that right. works on the GPU. That's another way of thinking when you need to run a ton of the oscillations, which are basically you can, something you can run in parallel and requires a lot of the compute. This is another way how it could be utilized, right? So does it get over the, because I mean, obviously one of the big problems with plugin uh, and multiple cores is many plugins just cannot access more than one core. Yes. By accessing a GPU, is, are you sort of getting around those limitations? Yes, exactly. Our patented technology exactly does that. It's called scheduler. The software scheduler was designed to deal with the consistency of latency buffers that you send to the device, as well as it provides you a way uh, to access uh, and map resources and allocate those resources on the GPU for whatever DSP modules you prepared for processing. Right, okay, so, I mean, this stuff is, is, is to most people probably a bit over their uh, um, uh, knowledge base, but I mean, this sort of technology is now becoming more and more uh, uh, prevalent. I mean, I guess, you know, over the next months or years, you're going to have 
uh, you're going to be in, in between those two kind of uh, ways of communicating data. So, I mean, yes. I guess a lot of it is it's about managing massive amounts of data across whatever yes. the bus is that is, is communicating them, right? Yes, exactly. And um, this, is, this, first of all, is tricky to implement even for gold standard frameworks such as NVIDIA CUDA. And it, it gets more trickier when you want to provide a cross-platform for multiple target platforms. Uh, unify this in one uh, SDK API that you want to offer to somebody else. So that's why developers of everything that touches the audio, whether it's partial audio, game audio, whether it's uh, generative AI or whatever else, they need some kind of the platform that can tackle it all and that can provide you the same unified API so it can be in the focus of creating the product itself rather than dealing with all of the mess uh, with the GPU because GPU programming is hard. So that's yeah. why we understand it needs to be lowering the standard requirements for the developers rather than... Um, so what's the, what's the turning point moment for you guys when you kind of have something out in a particular market? What, what plugin, what thing do you think will be the sort of thing where it goes, right, okay, everybody knows us now. This is a, an obvious example of what we can do for them. Because most people, I mean, this kind of thing is fabulous, but most, you know, most sort of hobbyists or less below kind of professional surround sound or game developers are not going to know about this. Okay. So when it comes to consumer audio experiences, I personally love what Holoplot is doing. And the Las Vegas Sphere is, the, uh, in my opinion, one of the best examples so far. Because everyone today talks about immersive audio. But besides the marketing language, there are very few people, like regular pe uh, people, not audiophiles, who are experiencing actually it, yeah. got immersed and they understand what is this about. So Las Vegas Sphere, uh, I was there, okay? It is uh, something that truly, absolutely different played back and thus absolutely differently uh, perceived by us as human beings. So wavefront synthesis and uh, beam steering are these types of the technologies that enables new consumer experience. The problem though is that one module of Holoplot uh, it costs, it starts uh, with $40,000 and it's 96 channels you need to wow, okay. process. Okay. And those modules, uh, they have 170,000 channels combined for the last figure sphere. And it's, I don't know, but based on my estimation, something around $50 million of wow. the setup. Okay, what about headsets then? I mean, because that must be, you know, like the Apple headset and you know, meta and whatever, there's a whole bunch of this stuff coming. Is there an application for your technology in that? Absolutely. Uh, so first of all, all the headsets, they have Qualcomm uh, chipsets. I mean, Meta and Oculus. And uh, Apple has its own uh, Vision Pro that has Apple M2. So those headsets we also support already. And everything that goes to the 3D is partialization and dynamic sound propagation, something we can also offer. So you can notice not just the... Uh, direction where the sound come from but also the distance right and it makes it like more close to what you experience today in, in, real, li in real life well it looks like the, uh, the 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 sessions just finished so we should probably wrap things up there thank you so much sure, Alexander. sure. Thank, you. thank you my pleasure thank you and cheers